I have 4.30, so we'll get started with our meeting. If you'll please stand for the pledge. Veronica Buchanan, would you please lead us in the pledge? Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Here. Veronica Buchanan. Here. Jerry Sartain. Here. Joe Machado. Here. Michael Rather. Here. Jared Barrett. Here. Dane Cantrell. Present. We have a quorum. You have the, minute, <coughs> the minutes of our last meeting. Are there any changes or additions to those minutes? Be approved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to be approved. Do we have a second? I'll second it. I have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. They are approved. The uh, we have one item of business, one cell tower, Verizon Wireless. The SCI tower, tower has been withdrawn, and uh, we'll move on to that. We ask that each of you that come before the board to speak try to keep your comments within the three-minute uh, range that we have set forward. and. Uh, we have reviewed all of the information from all sources, so our Board of Zoning Appeals is pretty familiar with this procedure and uh, with this request. Uh, the item that we have tonight is at 738-7389 Halls Hill Pike, and this is a, to establish a monopole communication tower that's measuring 189 feet. What do you have on that, please? <clears throat> Thank you. Application 2017-46 involves a property located at 7389 Halls Hill Pike. It is a 109-acre parcel, and Verizon Wireless is looking to install a tower measuring 189 feet in height upon this property. It's zoned residential low density. However, the site is also surrounded by residential medium density uh, zone property. And so this is uh, uh, the aerial of the entire site. They are planning to locate the <coughs> tower approximately I'm close to 500 feet off of Halls Hill Pike. It's more like 480 plus or minus um, in this general area. And you will see in your site plans the exact location of the tower on the site. We have received um, several phone calls regarding this tower. Several had um, voice concerns uh, about its location in this rural area and how it would impact the views of surrounding residents. Also, we had some favorable um, of the request. They were glad to, that their signal was going to improve in this area. We posted a sign on the property. And these are photos of, and this is from Google Earth, but we took some photos, or we snapped, snagged some photos off of Google Earth um, looking east. And this is uh, the property across the street is, and I believe that person will be here to speak um, in opposition of the location of the tower. Uh, we have the Cottrell Road terminates at Halls Hill Pike right at, across the street from the farm property. Uh, this is uh, looking west and the home that's located on the subject property and a barn and looking in the direction of where the tower will be located onto the property. And these are some snapshots from our pictometry program, and it kind of gives you a different perspective. So the tower will be located in this general area on the site. Can you see where my um, mouse is moving, the arrow, and, um, and the surrounding properties? And again, this is the site here, and the tower will be located in this general area. 
The tower will have to undergo site plan review and demonstrate meeting all of our requirements for site development. We'll also review landscaping. We have submitted in your packets a review from Larry Perry, who is the third party consultant, who's uh, indicated that the tower does meet our regulations. And you were given a letter in the, the previous meeting uh, from someone who is concerned about the impact to their property and the view. Now this is the survey of the property. The property contains a lot of uh, floodplain, but the tower will be located just outside of the floodplain, and they indicate that it's over 200 feet from the property line here, this point here. Now, in their elevation of the tower, they did not show the co-location opportunities that they would provide. However, in speaking with the applicant, they will demonstrate that during the site plan review process. And typically, you'll see additional uh, three additional antennas, and they indicated that they will offer co-location opportunities. And she has submitted a letter to our office indicating such it will need to be verified during site plan review. And this is another view of the site and the overall area. It's zoomed out. And then this is their landscape plan as well as the site plan so showing the improvements within the 75 by 75 foot fenced area. And they will be leasing 100 by 100 feet. Um, they'll extend the existing gravel driveway to access the property. And that concludes our presentation. In the opinion of the uh, planning staff, and your opinion as well, it meets all requirements? We do, but we've recommended some conditions um, that's included in the staff report, as well as them having to go through the site plan review process. Okay. We have those conditions. Um, we also asked uh, when we have a cell tower that a unbiased person uh, would also review the, the application to make sure that it meets all federal, state, and local requirements. We have uh, Mr. Larry Perry, who is a uh, licensed attorney and registered professional engineer. He has a number of years in experience in cell tower construction and administration. So we, I'm going to ask Mr. Perry to come around and give us a report on his review. And this is strictly unbiased. He's not working for us, and he's not working for the cell tower. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, I don't have any dogs in this hunt. I'm just looking at it from the outside, trying to give everybody a, a position as far as the federal, the state, and the local uh, uh, legal requirements that you're required to approve. In my opinion, they meet all the requirements. Now, this is one of those kind of things, as I was explaining to Mrs. Ellis, who wrote the letter, one of the uh, authors of the letter, but this is a situation to where <clears throat> it's kind of like when they built the interstate highway system. The local authorities don't have a lot of control over this. This is something that the federal is kind of the federal government has taken away from you uh, as far as what you can do, what you can't do. And gentlemen, and ladies, it's going to get worse. I belong to a couple of committees there, and they're looking at the new requirements for cell towers in the next coming three years. And in a metropolitan area like Nashville, it's gonna require 200 <coughs> per square mile. Now these are not tall towers, these are 35 foot telephone pole types. And in Murfreesboro, in the city area, probably the same, but as you get out into the, the hinterland, won't be quite as much. Anyway, to make a long story short, you're gonna be seeing more of these, more through the utility here as you will be through the, the planning commission because a lot of that is all, is gonna be preempted. The federal government's gonna preempt to you from having any say so in that matter. And from the utility, from what they can charge. There's been a couple of places where they tried to, in California and, and Rhode Island, where they try to charge like $3,000 a pole. 
and the federal government says it ain't going to happen. So anyway, I'll just give you a little heads up of what's about to come down. In this particular case, the, as you know, and as the chairman pointed out, and as Danielle pointed out, the original site was way up in the woods, way around the, the uh, end of that old road, but it was in the middle of a floodplain. Now, when they, the, federal, the federal government requires that we be a certain percentage, and the applicant be a certain percentage away from the nearest floodplain, and that's why they had to move the tower back, the, the, the support structure back to where it is, where it ended up being. And as a result, the uh, area where Mrs. Ellis lives, Miss Lee, uh, it's a situation where they'll be able to see it a little more prominent because it's a little closer to their house, even though it's going to be about, about 1,000 feet, a little less than, from where the tower to their home is. But that's something that it's uh, kind of beyond the control of the BZA. But anyway, if, if, any, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to say, but they may Any questions from Mr. Perry? Thank you, Mr. Perry. We appreciate you reviewing all this for us. Cell tower people. If you'll come forward. Mr. Chairman, board, uh, my name is Vicki Farmer. I'm from Ottawa, Tennessee, and I'm here representing Verizon Wireless. Um, as we've stated before, we have submitted a compliance statement showing that we have fulfilled the requirements in terms of the ordinance as it's strictly written. Um, there will be some additional um, information included in the plans that has been suggested by the staff that will be presented to the Planning Commission at its next meeting. Um, I'd like to address the, the landscaping concerns that we, uh, we just brought up in a, a few minutes ago. Um, I've been talking with the neighbor. Um, there is no problem with modifying our landscaping plans to include additional and taller vegetation if it will help to screen and buffer the, um, the base of the tower for this individual so that she's not looking directly at, the, at all of the equipment. Um, there's not too much I can do about the height of the tower, however, but I will do um, my very best in, in convincing the people at Wireless that we do need to add some additional, because of the movement of the, of the site toward, more toward the road, that we need to include some additional buffering there for visibility. Additional capacity for that area is that yes I do yes I do when we submitted um, when we were submitted the uh, package the application package we also included propagation maps before and after coverage to show what the um, the difference would be and there is a need any questions <clears throat> thank you we'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request Give us your name, please. Cassandra Ellis, and I live at 7432 Halls of I live across the street, and I was going to read you part of this letter, but you all got it, and no one else is here, and none of my neighbors came, and, and you read my letter, and you looked at it, and I just, at this point, I just want to say that um, we understand and support the expansion of the wireless service. I have teenagers, lots of them. So I understand it's coming. I hear what he's saying. However, these decisions, they have to be made with the consideration to the welfare of the residents of Rutherford County and not just to the convenience of mega companies who are wishing to expand their profits. We are therefore making a plea for the following. Allow a qualified, unbiased, impartial, individual to walk my land and report to the body what is accurate in terms of the effect of this tower as the aesthetics to the adjacent land use, which is me. Request consideration of other locations on the same property, just a little bit further back behind the woods, 
makes a big difference, huge difference. Further from Halls Hill Pike, deeper into the property, that will make this tower a lot less visible and enforced as condition, conditions of your approval all current statues that will make this tower less visible and thus less of a negative impact to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay, so this is my kitchen window. Um, our home burnt down three years ago and we rebuilt on the site, same spot our old house was. The builder asked me, where do you wanna put your house? So I said, cause I know Mr. Garvin, we've been there for all the years, he's been there even longer and his family's been there even longer than that. I said, I wanna overlook this. I wanna look outside my kitchen window and this is what I wanna see. And so we built our house, what will now be the view of a cell tower. <laughs> So it will be right up there. This, so this is my kitchen window on the first floor. I wish I had gone to my porch, but. Yeah. Thank you, you did a good job. Wait just a minute and see if any, any questions. You did a good job. I will now take questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're still open for the public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak. We'll close the public hearing. Um, I'm sure you already know this, and we appreciate your comments. And for everybody that comes up here about cell towers, if half of the folks would put down their, their cell phones and other technology, it wouldn't need these cell towers. The federal government mostly regulates cell towers and not the BZA. All we do is review and make sure it meets the requirements as we understand it. And according to Mr. Perry and our staff, it does. We can't tell the cell tower people where to put it. We don't have any authority to do that. Sometimes we would like to, but we just don't have the power to do that. So I don't want you to leave here thinking that we have not heard your request, and you, we understand where you're coming from. Uh, hopefully, if they build a tower there, or, you know, they have a certain length of time. If they don't, then it's out. But if they do, we hope you'll get used to it like the other trees around there <laughs> and other things. But uh, we do thank you for being here, and we understand what you have to say. We'll close the public hearing, and I'll entertain a motion on this. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> uh, considering that they meet, this meets the general requirements for special exception, I do move to approve contingent upon the four conditions found under the staff comment. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Call a roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Veronica Buchanan. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Michael Rather. Yes. Jared Barrett. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. Is there any other business to come before the BZA? No, sir. We are adjourned. Thank you for everyone. <laughs>